good morning everyone i welcome you all for the second session of uh, radiation in the previous class we started with the basic concepts of radiation and with the emission characteristics of the surface to begin with we have studied the black surface a black surface is an ideal surface which absorbs all radiation falling on it regardless of its wavelength or direction then we had studied the total hemispherical emissive power which is given by small e and it is the radiant flux emitted from the surface of a body and it is given in watts per meter square then we studied the total hemispherical emissivity it is nothing but the ratio of total hemispherical emissive power of a surface to the total hemispherical emissive power of a black surface at the same temperature and the emissivity is, will always vary from 0 to 1 then we had monochromatic hemispherical emissive power it is nothing but the radiant flux emitted per unit wavelength and it is given by watt per meter square per micrometer and the total hemispherical emissive power in the other words it is given by it is that quantity when integrated over all wavelengths gives me the total hemispherical emissive power along with that we studied the total monochromatic hemispherical emissivity it is the ratio of monochromatic hemispherical emissive power of a surface to the monochromatic hemispherical emissive power of a black surface at the same temperature and a wavelength in the previous class we had stopped for the gray surface a gray surface is a ideal surface which is which will be having the same value of epsilon lambda at all wavelengths so suppose if i draw a graph with respect to the wavelength which is varying from 0 to infinity in x direction and in the y direction the epsilon lambda epsilon lambda varies from 0 to 1 always and for the different values for the different uh, surfaces of wavelength i'll be having different epsilon lambda for different wavelengths i'll be having different epsilon lambda where my value varies along with my wavelength so this gray surface is the idealization where i draw a line for which it gives me the same value of epsilon lambda throughout all the wavelengths from 0 to infinity so a gray surface is a surface which is having the same value of epsilon lambda at all the wavelengths till now we studied the emission characteristics of the surface so let's go to the laws of uh, black body radiation the first law is the planck's law it is the mono it gives me the monochromatic emissive power of a black surface it is given by eb lambda is equal to 2 pi c1 divided by lambda raised to pi into exponential of c2 by pi lambda into t minus 1 for me c1 and c2 are the constants which gives me the value of 0.597 into 10 raised to minus 16 watt meter square and c2 is 0.014387 meter kelvin and in this equation lambda is the wavelength and t is nothing but the absolute temperature which is given in kelvin and for the non black surface this equation is for the black surface and if i have a non black surface it is e lambda is equal to the emissive uh, emissive uh, power of a monochromatic hemispherical emissivity multiplied by 
the eb lambda eb lambda is given by the planck's law and this is the property of a surface whatever the surface we have then we have this eb lambda if i differentiate this uh, equation of planck's uh, law if i differentiate that with respect to the wavelength it gives me a value of uh, it gives me the maximum value of lambda to get some value of lambda what we usually do is we differentiate that value uh, with uh, and equate it to zero when i do so i get lambda max into t is equal to 0.00290 meter kelvin that is nothing but it is given by the wain's law and for me wain's law gives us the maximum values at a particular temperature it gives to me the maximum value of the wavelength maximum value of the wavelength at a particular temperature and it is given by lambda max into absolute temperature is equal to 0.00290 meter kelvin now if i plot a graph if i plot a graph in the x axis the wavelength which varies from 0 to infinity and in the y axis it varies from eb lambda eb lambda and uh, for a different uh, temperatures for a different temperatures i plot a graph it goes to let me read the graph when we hold down a particular temperature the value of eb lambda the first point of it the value of eb lambda increases along with the wavelength to a particular temperature and reaches to the maximum value of eb lambda and then it reduces for with the increase in the wavelength further and this is the variation of wavelength from 0 to infinity i have not considered it for uh, 0.1 to 10 microns and uh, the second uh, point what we need to observe here is with the increase in the temperature with the increase in the temperature say for example 50 100 200 i have drawn with the increase in the temperature there is a increase in the uh, e lambda max there is a increase in the e lambda max at a shorter wavelength at a shorter wavelength it has been decreased at a shorter wavelength we are getting the maximum value of eb lambda that is what we observe from the graph also we observe the third point in the graph is the max particular at a particular value of lambda at a particular value of lambda the eb lambda increases with temperature so let me repeat the observation of eb lambda plotted with lambda for a per different temperatures the first point is at a particular temperature eb lambda increases with lambda goes through a maximum and then decreases asymptotically to zero the second point is at a particular value of lambda say for example i draw a line here at a particular value of lambda eb lambda increases with the temperature it is increasing at if i draw a line here eb lambda is increasing with temperature the third point is the maximum value of eb lambda this is the maximum value for 50 this is the maximum value for 100 this is the maximum for 200 degrees celsius the maximum value of eb lambda occurs at a smaller wavelength 
as t increases as the temperature increases the eb maximum value of eb lambda is occurring at a smaller wavelength these things i should be knowing and it should be in our mind from this graph so that is what we come to a conclusion with this graph the third one as we are familiar with our uh, law it is the stefan boltzmann's law it gives me the emissive power of a black surface where eb is nothing but which when integrated with respect to eb lambda for a different uh, wavelengths from 0 to infinity it is given by the uh, emissive power of a black surface which when integrated eb lambda we get it from again from the planck's law eb lambda is nothing but we get it from the planck's law which is nothing but monochromatic emissive power of a black surface so this monochromatic hemispheric uh, emissive power of a black surface which but the uh, wave all the wavelengths gives me the emissive power of a black surface so that when in that the equation when we substitute and when we integrate we are not going to do any integration part here since we don't have anything it is left to you if you want to do it it is the very easiest integration when we do the integration we get this 2 pi c1 60 raised to 4 by c2 raised to 4 into this whole thing we get it with pi raised to 4 by 90 then these 2 pi is a constant c1 is a constant c2 is a constant pi 90 and 6 when these all constants put together we call it as a stefan boltzmann constant and we call it as a sigma and the value of this sigma is given by 5.670 into 10 raised to minus 8 and the unit of this is watt per meter square kelvin raised to 4 and this is equal to the emissive power of a black surface is equal to stefan boltzmann constant into the fourth power of the absolute temperature so that is what we study in our uh, laws along with that let's till now we studied the emission characteristics of the surface along with that we have studied the uh, laws governing those emission characteristics of a surface so let us study the absorption characteristics of the surface let us study the absorption characteristics of the surface we only surface not only emit rays it also absorbs rays so we should also know the radiation what happens to the radiation incident on the surface what happens to a radiation incident on a surface so let's uh, start with the radiation the uh, incident on a surface when radiation falls on a surface a part is absorbed and the rest is reflected if the body is transparent a part may also be transmitted say for example i consider this part as a surface i consider this is a surface and it is maintain at a certain temperature when it is maintained at a certain temperature it also emit rays in the form of a hemispherical shape then i have a incident ray falling on that surface i have a incident ray falling on the surface thus some part of the surface uh, the ray which is been fallen on the surface part of that radiation will be absorbed part of the radiation 
will be reflected and part of the radiation will be transmitted if the surface is transparent now what happens is in reflection i have two types one the incident ray the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection that is the beta to the normal to the direction of the surface the angle of incidence even it is equal to the angle of reflection we have to the normal to the direction of surface will be having this angle of incidence if i take it as beta 1 and beta 2 it will be equal then we have the other types of reflections which will be on all the which will be scattered through the surface then we have part of the surface for radiation absorbed and part of it is uh, transmitted through the surface so this is all about incident on a surface when radiation falls on a surface when a radiation falls on a surface part is absorbed part is rest is reflected and if a if a body is transparent a part may also be transmitted when we know some of the things we should also know the absorption characteristics the first characteristic is total hemispherical irradiation which is given by capital h it is nothing but the radiant flux it is nothing but a radiant flux incident on the surface of a body a radiant flux incident on a surface of a body and it is given by watt per meter square say for example i consider this as a surface and for me total hemispherical irradiation is all the radiant flux which is incident on this surface is given by h all the radiant flux incident on the surface i have a surface all the surfaces which are uh, all the radiant flux which is incident on this surface i call it as total hemispherical irradiation now these uh, radiant flux which are incident on the surface might be coming through the surrounding surfaces which might be a surrounding surface which might again uh, be with the hemispherical shape we are only interested in from the surrounding surface how many radiant flux is incident only on this surface and that is again given by watt per meter square then we have total hemispherical emissivity absorptivity the first one let us go with the total hemispherical absorptivity and it is given by alpha and it is nothing but the fraction of a total hemispherical irradiation absorbed at a surface absorbed at a surface so i have a surface if i consider a surface absorptivity is nothing but fraction of this total hemispherical irradiation that is the radiant flux incident on the surface of a body which is been absorbed is called as total hemispherical absorptivity and it is given by ha by h ha some we call it as absorbed flux and we should also know very important is for a black surface alpha will be equal to 1 why we say alpha is equal to 1 because all the incident ray which is been fallen on the black surface will be <coughs> absorbed by the black surface 
so for us alpha will be equal to 1 black surface will not emit uh, will not reflect nor it transmits anything it absorbs all the radiant flux which has been fallen on the surface so let it be for all the wavelength and for all the direction so for all the wavelength and for all the direction if all the radiant flux which is incident on the surface is absorbed then we call it as alpha is equal to 1 and it happens only for the black surface then we have monochromatic hemispherical irradiation monochromatic hemispherical irradiation it is given by h lambda it is the radiant flux incident on the surface of a body for a particular wavelength for a particular wavelength and it is given by watt per meter square per micrometer and it is nothing but it is given by h lambda it is nothing but it is given by dh is the h is nothing but total irradiation a small radiation divided by particular wavelength and dh is equal to h lambda into d lambda then which when integrated this whole thing the monochromatic hemispherical irradiation which when integrated over all the wavelengths will give me the total hemispherical irradiation that is h in other words the monochromatic hemispherical irradiation is that quantity when integrated over all the wavelengths gives me the total hemispherical irradiation or the radiant flux incident on a surface of a body for a particular wavelength we call it as monochromatic hemispherical irradiation along with that we need to know monochromatic hemispherical absorptivity that is nothing but fraction of a mono monochromatic hemispherical irradiation absorbed at the surface the fraction of a monochromatic hemispherical irradiation absorbed at a surface we call it as monochromatic hemispherical absorptivity and it is given by alpha lambda which is equal to ha lambda by h lambda ha lambda is nothing but the absorbed flux on the similar note we can also define monochromatic hemispherical reflectivity and monochromatic hemispherical transmittivity it is nothing but the fraction of a, say suppose for a monochromatic hemispherical reflectivity it is the fraction of a monochromatic hemispherical irradiation which is reflected at a surface only when i have to remove this absorbed word and add a reflectivity word then i have a monochromatic hemispherical transmissivity it is the fraction of a monochromatic hemispherical irradiation which is transmitted at a surface and reflectivity is given by rho and transmittivity is given by tau and if i consider the total hemispherical reflectivity it is given by rho if i consider the monochromatic it is given by rho lambda if i consider total hemispherical transmittivity it is given by tau and monochromatic hemispherical transmittivity is given by tau lambda say for example if i take the total hemispherical reflectivity it is nothing but a fraction of total hemispherical irradiation absorbed at a surface sorry uh, reflected at a surface and the uh, transmittivity is the fraction of a total hemispherical irradiation which is transmitted at the surface so on the similar notes we define this total hemispherical reflectivity 
and uh, transmissivity. And we should also know that alpha plus rho plus tau is equal to 1. Alpha plus rho plus tau is equal to 1. And alpha lambda plus rho lambda plus tau lambda should also be equal to 1. And if I have a body is opaque, that means transmittivity is equal to 0. This is very, very important for me to understand in the problems, they give a opaque body. If I, I read a sentence with an opaque body, that means the transmissivity of that surface is equal to zero. In that case, alpha plus rho, that is absorptivity and reflectivity when added together will be equal to one. Or alpha lambda plus rho lambda is equal to one. Also, let me combine till now whatever we have done. That is, we have studied the emission characteristics of the surface as well as the absorption characteristics of the surface. Total hemispherical means for all the wavelengths. Monochromatic hemispherical means for a particular wavelength. Emissivity is given by epsilon when it is for the, all the wavelengths and it is the emission characteristics of a surface. Epsilon lambda is for a particular wavelength. Emissivity, absorptivity, reflectivity, and transmissivity is given by alpha, rho, and tau. And it is nothing but the uh, absorption characteristics of a surface or a incident uh, rays characteristics or a radi irradiation characteristics of a surface for all the wavelengths 